and skillets. I am back again with another video and uh, I actually made a video yesterday about this but I didn't really like the way that I did it. So I'm going to try What again. I'm going to talk um, about today is my phone interview from the Disney College program. Um, so that was Tuesday, today is Thursday, September 4th, and today was actually also my first day of classes. Um, so, anyways, let's get started on that. So, Tuesday was my phone interview. It was scheduled for um, 9.15 a.m., and um, so it was kind of early, not super early, but for someone who's used to sleeping in pretty late, it was kind of early, but I sucked it up and I did it anyway. I woke up around 8.30 and I, just to kind of let myself wake up and um, prepare myself, make sure I had my notes already and all that fun stuff, um, did any last minute research that I felt like I needed to do, and I uh, had my mom sit in on the interview with me just so that she could be there so and kind of give me feedback. Said that I had when I was doing my research, they had said, you know, you can they can call anywhere from 15 minutes early to 15 minutes late. So I made sure I was ready to go and by nine. around 9:20 was when they called. Um, so. 9:20, my phone rang and I kind of just stared at it for a little bit and I was like oh my gosh and my mom was like take a deep breath and answer the phone so um so I did I took a deep breath and I answered and I said hi this is Nicole and then she said hi Nicole this is Christine you know went through that whole spiel and um so I what I from the research that I had done beforehand all the like all the YouTube videos that I've watched um, everybody was saying make sure you remember your interviewer's name and make sure you call them by name so um, my interviewer's name was the first thing she asked me was you know she asked me you know what's a good time still a good time for you to do your interview and I said yes and um, she was verified some information real quick before we got started and then the first thing that she asked me once we officially started the interview was um, she asked me about my work experience so I explained to her um, the work experience that I'd had that I put on my application, which was lifeguard at Warren Springs and piano teacher. So I gave her that information, and then she also asked about any experience that I had outside of paid work So um, I gave her that experience, and then she also asked me, um, after that she asked me about um, some of my experiences working as a lifeguard at Warren Springs. So, um, uh, she asked me things, um, regarding, you know, how I handle certain situations, um, what it's been like, what I've learned from that, and, um, my mom said that the only thing, the only question from that that she didn't think that I really answered was she asked me how I handle a situation when I have multiple tasks to complete and how do I get through that. Um, and I didn't really answer the question as well as I could have um, and now that I look back on it I didn't really my mom was right I didn't really answer the question. I told her that um, I used an example of you know if I'm at the top of a slide dispatching guests at the top of the slide you know we have the scale at the top of some of our slides and we have a height restriction on some of our slides so I gave an example of if I had to, if I had a guest that was over the weight limit and a guest that was too short and how I would handle a situation like that. Um, and for some reason I thought I had managed to tie it back into the actual question, but my mom said I didn't and I kind of agree with her, so could have answered that one a little bit differently. But for the most part my mom said my, that my answers were really good. Um, she asked me another question about what my busiest day was like at work and how I handled that day. And, um, and my mom said that it was a really good answer. Um, there, she also told, my mom told me afterwards that I stuttered a little bit. Um, and that was mostly because there were some answers I didn't prepare pro properly for, or some questions that I didn't prepare for. Um, and I just wasn't sure how to, I under, 
in the moment, I wasn't sure how to answer them, so I stuttered. Um, so, anyways, I, um, uh, so she said that that was kind of, um, a, a little off was, was I stuttered a little bit, so, uh, we'll, we'll see about that. And then, also, um, she asked me about, let's see, after, after she got, she asked me various questions uh, along the lines of my job as a lifeguard. And then after that, she asked me, she talked to me about my roles that I had chosen. And um, we talked a little bit about the, the roles that I chose, why I chose um, why I chose them, why I felt I was qualified um, for them, and I think I chose character performer was my top because that's the one that I'm most looking at, and then I chose lifeguard because that's another one that I'm really qualified for and that I enjoy doing, and also uh, I chose attractions because um, that kind of goes along the lines of what I've been doing as a lifeguard at Roaring Springs because we dispatch slides at the water park, so. I have experience in that, and then I chose front desk and hospitality, or maybe it was just hospitality, and then the other one was concierge slash front desk, uh, and I chose those just because I'm familiar with being able to greet people and being positive with people, being able to give people information, um, so um, I talked about that, and then after that, um, she asked me what two jobs I thought I was most qualified for, and I had said character performer because of all the performance experience I've had and then lifeguard because uh, I, I said attractions first because for some reason lifeguards didn't come to mind first <laughs> so I was starting to explain why I was most qualified for attractions and said something about lifeguard and I was like oh probably lifeguard then would be my second one so my mom was like duh you should have just chosen that one but for some reason I didn't think about it, whatever, I don't know, um, so, yeah, um, and I talked about that, and then after that, she left it open for questions, and I didn't, um, I didn't, I honestly didn't really have any questions, because, um, I've been doing so many years of research on the Disney College program, and I just didn't feel like I had any questions left, because I've asked all the questions that I've ever had. Um, and all my questions have been answered. So I had to do a lot of thinking about some questions because I knew I needed to ask at least a couple of questions um, just to seem to show them that I'm interested and like genuinely interested and, um, and uh, yeah, so I, I asked them and apparently uh, I didn't ask the greatest questions because she seemed kind of like thrown off by them like I don't know. Um, I asked her about if I don't get, you know, if my highest uh, interest role is has already been filled by other applicants, um, will I get offered a backup role? And she was like, well, it's kind of early to say because we're not going to make our decisions until October. So we'll choose the ones that we feel you're most qualified for and go from there. And I was like, okay. Didn't really answer my question, but okay. Um, and then after that, she asked me, or no, I asked her, I was about class, classes, because I wasn't originally planning on doing classes, but, uh, and I told her this, I said, but uh, I noticed that one of the classes, the show production class, is similar to a class that is a requirement for my major, so I may or may not be able to get credit for that, so how would that work? And then she told me how that works. Um, but again, the questions I asked, I guess, don't really apply until later on. Um, so it was hard for her to answer them because um, it was so early. So, um, but that was really all the questions I could think of. I mean, I've been doing, I've been researching the Disney College program literally for seven years. So... At that point, I had most of my questions um, answered. So, so yeah, that was kind of how my interview went um, in the order of things. Um, and then, so now I'm going to give some of, you know, kind of my tips for people 
doing the interview in the future or um, you know have interviews coming up you're preparing for them um, definitely um, even like if, if you're still in your application process um, I would say because I, I most of the roles they had I said no interest because and the only reason I said no interest is because I don't have I didn't think that I had enough experience to say that I had any interest in them so um, and only said that I had interest in roles that I thought I had um, that I qualified for but I would suggest if you have any interest in any of the roles at all say that you have at least low interest because um, they're going to train you, you know, if, if they um, feel like they can train you and work with you, they'll choose you for that role. Um, I mean, if they if they don't feel like you can do it, then they won't choose you. So what does it hurt to say that you have interest in it? So if you have an interest, say that you have interest in as many roles as you actually have interest because that maximizes your chances of getting in. Um, also, when you're preparing for your phone interview, have a note, have notes, um, like some bullet point notes. Don't write word for word what you want to say, um, don't, because you, you don't want to sound like a robot, a, a robot, um, but you do want to be able to know what you're going to say, and you don't want to stutter like I did. Um, and you want to feel prepared to answer the questions that they're going to ask. So, um, I would say definitely, uh, have a notebook, give, like, anything that you want to talk about, make bullet points, um, think about questions that you're pretty sure they're going to ask, and prepare an answer for it, and write just basic notes. Um, one thing that I wanted to talk to them about, but didn't either forgot or just didn't get the opportunity to feel like I didn't get the opportunity to was I wanted to tell them um, about what I researched on their four keys to a great guest experience which are um, safety courtesy show and efficiency and I did a lot of research on that and um, I'd wanted to tell them about how um, I noticed uh, in my research on that how over the evolution of that um, like their main principles have stayed the same and it's always been um, their uh, you know the do everything to with excellence and um, make sure everybody feels like they're special and um, you know just do everything you do do it with a positive attitude and that's something that I've been taught my whole life so it was something that I related to and I wanted to explain that to them but unfortunately I didn't, so, um, it, it's weird because I had my notes, but I wasn't, I didn't make use of them properly, so, um, if you're going to follow my advice and use notes, make sure you use them, um, so, uh, definitely have notes, um, just make them bullet points, don't write word for word what you're going to say, just main points that you want to make. Um, have somebody practice with you, do a mock interview. Um, I had my mom do that with me a couple of times where she just asked me sample questions and I answered um, how I thought I would answer and then my mom made corrections where she felt necessary and um, we did it that way. So I would also recommend that. And then do smile during your interview. I mean, it is over the phone, but they can tell. Oh, well, that's bad. Um, um, it was getting really bright. Um, okay, so... So... Oh, smiling. Smiling, um, they can tell over the phone if you're smiling. Um, just in the way you talk. When you smile, you sound different when you're talking, when you're smiling, and then when you're just normal. You can hear a difference. So smile when you're talking over the phone. Um, I smiled a few times, but my mom said I didn't, she didn't feel like I was smiling the whole time, so. I guess I could have done better there, but whatever. It's over. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, smile, have notes, do mock interviews, 
just be yourself. They want to get to know you. Be professional, but um, be you. Um, don't try to sound fake. Um, don't just tell them what you think that they want to hear. They want to get to know you as a person, not just as an employee, as a cast member, but as a person. So um, be yourself, be respectful, be professional, but don't sound like a robot um, is generally the rule of thumb. <laughs> um, you do want to be genuine. So give them, I mean, if you want to show them who you are and show them that you are what they're looking for. They can't do that unless you show them your personality through your interview. So however you think you can do that, do it. Um, so, and I think that's all the tips that I have. Um, I won't find out until like October. Um, at least that's what the interview said. I've heard some people finding out a week later. Um, some people didn't find out till a month later. So I have my audition scheduled for October 7th, um, which is a Tuesday. So I'll be going to Salt Lake for that, for my character performer audition. Um, and then I'll find out sometime in October, approximately, if I got in. So uh, that is pretty much all I have. If you have questions or anything of that nature, you can comment or um, leave me a message, whatever you, whatever your little heart desires. So that's all I have for today and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Remember, 